Hello, guys. I was checking the monitor in the back. Oh, um, make sure it was video correctly. So today is the April nine, Friday, Friday the ninth, five twenty-eight. So about five thirty-ish. Look at the grass, guys. It's popping up like crazy. Left the horses in again today uh, to give the paddock, as you can see back there, a break. Um, it just sprinkled ever so slightly, barely anything. Um, so the ground is getting dry tomorrow morning. First thing, I'll let them out. So I didn't do much to this. These things today, I um, bought some lumber. So, the lumber I bought for the tops, uh, not so good. <laughs> um, it was all chipped, so I bought, oh, right here. I bought two more one by sixes and three more two by fours. The two by fours, what I want to do is see how shabby the uh, the sides are, you know, underneath. Oh, yeah, wait a minute. There you go. Um, I want to put uh, two by four underneath there. Um, give it'll give it a lot more strength all the way around around the whole thing so if, if it works that's for this one if it works good then i'll do it for this one okay so yesterday um uh gary west was here and i tried to uh type what you know on youtube or on facebook what uh what he did with my welder try to turn this radio down Um, try to turn it down, and as I do it, it changes the, um, the band. So, the band as in, you know, AM, FM. So, what Gary did with this thing, I'm really happy with. I bought this welder, oh, about um, a boot, a boot, um, what, 40 years ago? No, about 35 years ago. And obviously, I haven't used it much, as you can see. It's uh, pretty much pristine. So the problem I was having, and I, I, I did some welding in the, um, I did some welding in the uh, Corvette, and you saw how it would stick, constantly sticking in the nozzle. I, there's nothing I could do. So I, what I found was, what I found was, um, uh, it was having trouble. Whoa, it just fell in a stupid seat. The problem with this seat is, I know I'm going off topic, but this thing here, this back, this back here, if it's like this and I sit on it, it hurts and I kind of spasm and almost fall. And that would not be a cool scene. That would be a bad scene. So I sh get one without a, a, a back. The back's only that high. What good does that do, right? So. It's a Hobart Beta MIG 2. Act like I know what I'm talking about. But it's a Hobart uh, MIG welder. Um, so the problem I had was it wasn't going, the wire wasn't going, the wire. Fred Durheimer would say, it's not wire, it's a wire. The wire wouldn't go through the cable. The feed cable? I'm thinking, why? Why wouldn't it do that? And I don't, I couldn't sell you. So, um, what I surmised it to be was these rollers here. I know it's going to be a little dark, but these rollers here were, were slipping. Well, I did not do the 5Y. Should have done the 5Y and I would have figured it out. Um, so my plan was to take off the, take the rollers out and then um, replace them. You know, I'm a welder. I know I know how to weld, but I'm not a weld tech or a weld engineer. I'm a, I, I, I know how to weld. And I know how to grind. <laughs> but it was constantly sticking. It was not getting a good, consistent uh, wire um, wire feed. So as I'm talking to you about that, you guys come uh, think of what it might be. You know, and then uh, Gary West... You know, I, I, so what I did was uh, I tried to take this apart. I couldn't do it. Um, I thought I'd had to take this whole thing out. So Gary was 
telling me, ah, that's easy. I'm going, yeah, right. So for me to run it at that at, at the time was I would I threaded I put more thread onto this this thing right here, the shaft, and then I put stacks of washers in there and just forced this thing down as hard as possible to the point where I'm sure the roller, the idler, was pushing so hard on here on the bottom, top one to bottom, that it was it was, it was still slipping. I think, oh man. So Gary came by. I says, oh, so you think you you can fix it, huh? Have at it. <laughs> so he gets in there and he starts, uh, you know, he says, okay, take all his washers off. He's okay, all right. And then I was thinking I need this roller, this roller. He says, no, that's just a, you know, just pushes it down against the teeth on this this, this thing here, this bottom roller. roller. So I gave him a 916. He took this off. And then there's three screws that holds this together, which shows here, you know, these right there are the screws. But the, yeah, it's, it's hard to explain. Anyway, uh, which opens up this, uh, separates the, uh, the lower roller cam, I guess you can call it, and um, feeder, feed roller. And you take those three screws apart out, and then the, uh, the roller itself breaks in two so there's like sandwich here's one side and here's the other side so one two now it's serrated on the outer edge it's going to be hard to explain but the outer edge of the rollers are serrated and indented and chamfered to fit either a 30 to 35 thousands wire or if you flip it the other way because this side is serrated too and then if you flip it the other way and then you can use up to a 45 thousands wire pretty sure that's yeah I'm pretty sure that's the size so anyway but it's one of these use you, you get what you see what you see is what you get. So if you have the, the numbers, the 35 to 45 numbers are stamped on the opposite side of the half of the rollers. <laughs> Makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? But if you were here, you'd, you'd see it. Or if I was able to, could take it apart, I could actually show it to you, but forget about it. So we took that apart and he, he cleaned this thing with silicone. I got some spray silicone. And then I clean this with spray silicone and put it back together. Oh, so I thought I had to take the whole thing apart, but this is the only one I had to come out. And it come right out. I says, you got to be kidding me. You got to be kidding me. So I learned something new, man. Oh, shine a light on Dirk Tenhoff. Look at that. Now you can really see it. Well, maybe not. <laughs> so anyway, he said, get rid of those washers. And the wire was coated with rust, totally coated. And again, it's like 35 years old. It's a pretty big spool. So uh, we went to Menards, bought a brand new roll of wire, copper coated wire, uh, 0.035 inches. And as I was, and then, then I was just pulling the wire through here to see if there was resistance. You're supposed to be able to pull it out like this, but I was wrapping around my hand and yanking it. It was horrible. Uh, and then this thing was draped down here. And then every time he raised this up, it, was, it went a little bit easier. But anyway, so now I got this thing attached here. I'll put a put a support on there somehow. I can figure something out. Um, but, so we pulled the wire out. And then Gary had me blow air through the through the nozzle, through the nozzle, and all the way around here, and you wouldn't have believed how much rust powder came came flying out of there. And rust, which is oxidized steel, oxidized iron. So um, there's two things: oxidation and reduction. You guys tell me what that means. 
and I'll tell you whether you're right or you're wrong. <laughs> so anyway, there's what was rust in there. So I blew all that out, and then we slapped the the we slapped the cable, blew it out again. More came out, kept coming out, till nothing else would come out. So we ran the wire in there, and sure enough, you could pull it out like this. So he had to do a little welding for me, and um, we fired it up, and it ran beautifully. You can see right here, there was some samples that he welded to get to dial it in. I had that thing cranked up so high, it was ridiculous. Now, we had to crank this right here down to one, so it's the lowest setting, and then that was this wire feed was okay. But uh, it was disgusting. It wouldn't weld. And sure enough, that's the trouble I was having. So much trouble welding with this thing. And now it runs beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. Beautiful. So, that was yesterday. So, uh, it's like a brand new welder, guys. Brand new welder. So, another thing... Um, that people really need to understand is high pressure tanks like this one here i think it goes up to like 2300 psi that's massive guys and what that is is that's a mixture of um, nitrogen and argon i believe and uh co2 all three are inert very inert gases um but why, what, what's the mixture all about? I don't know. I'd have to do a little study on that. But uh, at least it's all inert. Who cares? And uh, the thing we have to remember is with high pressure valves, high pressure uh, uh, tanks, when you open this, you open it all the way, all the way, because it seals in the open position. Because if you have it partially open and you're not running this thing, there is pressure high pressure from from there to here to here and if it's not fully sealed seated it can start leaking out and damaging your seal so if you open up like say um oxygen comes up to you know 2500 psi uh for excellent torches open it all the way all the way and then because it seals open and then it also seals shut of course so you shut it all the way. Thought I'd show that knowledge. Most people don't know that. I do. <laughs> so anyway, um, this thing's like a brand new welder, guys. So I'm really happy. What did he weld? I'll show you someday. But uh, he he did some welding for me. So I know how to weld, but I just didn't. He was here, and he's a good welder. That was his job forever. So. Have at, it, have at it, sunshine. He was willing to do it. So weather-wise, it was a little chilly guy, oh, guys. And right now at uh, almost 6 o'clock, I might be done with this video before Kathy goes to work. We get to say bye to her. Jim, James Modulesky. Jim Modulesky. The last thing he wrote me was, they should pretty, they should, pretty efficient heater. I have several one-pound tanks and adapter to fill them. From a 20 pound tank much cheaper that way so what we're talking about is he asked me if i have my bed done in my um camper van and i said the short answer was no the long answer is no but um the frame is done but i don't have a i don't have a um a mattress pad so I said, I don't have a clue where to get it. I asked Kathy, she didn't have a clue either. So we're clueless. So he said, go to Jonathan, Jonathan Stevens, call them up, maybe, and then uh, they can cut up some foam. That's all I need, foam pad, nice foam pad, set it on there. Uh, I did tell them I bought an inverter for it. Whether I needed it or not, I don't know. It looks like it has got an inverter in the van already, but... I'll get an inverter in case I want to use it in my truck or whatever. You know, we go on a trip. I can sleep in the bed. And, um, yeah, cool. 
So yeah, I'll be able to use my CPAP machine in there while I sleep. I can't sleep without a CPAP, guys. Simply no way. It doesn't work. So I'm happy about that. Uh, otherwise, uh, I got a visit from Hank Hahn. Hank was here, and uh, we had a nice chat. And I had to do some shopping, so we did some shopping. Uh, what else? Uh, kind of a non-productive day. I did get up early, clean the stalls. Um, uh, yeah, like I said earlier, tomorrow I'll let the horses out. The grass is popping up. Oh, I picked up the quad runner. Uh, uh, uh. I picked up the quad runner. That was done. It was repaired by Caparis Small Engine Repair in Byron Center on 76th Street. Um, excellent guys, two young guys. Can't think of their last names. I think the, the, the owner is Spencer and this brother is, I believe co-owner is Max, I believe. We'll say Max. So Max, Spencer and Max. Uh, they do good work, quality work, and I keep bringing my stuff to them and they bring it back well. Good. Uh, the next thing, so they fixed my quad runner. Boom, fires right up. It leaks like a sieve. So Shamut Hills Honda or Yamaha or whatever, they, they, that's where I bought it from years ago. And then they repaired it. So they went ahead and I asked them to repair it. Uh, lights shine in your face, I'm thinking. And uh, they had hoses unhooked, uh, bolts loose. It, it was a mess. And, and the uh, spigot was uh, plugged up and, and leaking. So they repaired, they um, rebuilt the spigot and they rebuilt the carburetor. And then his comment was, make sure you use seafoam in your gas. So in other words, if it's staying for the winter or you're not gonna drive it for more than six months, pour some sea, uh, one ounce of seafoam per gallon. And that'll, and then run it for a while so you know that the uh, seafoam got in the carburetor, it'll keep it pristine. And you don't need to use RV gas, yet I am going to use RV gas. Um, I did tell him I do have a nice little um, right there. Actually, it's a huge um, generator, gasoline generator. I've been using, I've been using um, RV gas in that, but uh, guess what? It might have been too late because I've been using regular 